Hi, this is Roger from Kanka Labs, and yes, it works. My version of the flip clock or flip digit clock from uh, Coit Behringer, um, who was so kind to put all the design files online. So, and I will give you a few hints if you want to build your own. Uh, you need basically three things. Uh, you get these flip digit uh, from eBay. Uh, they are one inch in height. And second, you need the PCB. Um, the cheapest way is probably from PCB way, but then you get uh, even five, uh, but it could still be the cheapest way. And next is you, of course, need all the components. And I have a bit rectified the bill of materials that uh, Coit put online. And so you can uh, download this. I will give you the link down below in the comments uh, with all the DigiKey part numbers. And it is sorted uh, in a way just for easier finding when you assemble the PCB and solder the components. You can just easier identify the components. and. This is not a project for the beginner. You can see it's uh, most 90% are SMD components and quite small, some of them. There are even some 0402 resistors. Uh, so I've soldered all of them under a microscope and except for three broken Schottky diodes out of, I don't know, 50, 60 or 70. Uh, this thing worked from the first moment on and after replacing these three uh, broken Schottky diodes, uh, everything uh, was working perfectly. So without any magnifier, you will hardly be able to finish this uh, project SMD soldering with success. And uh, the last thing is, of course, you need the firmware. Uh, now, Coit has this is in basically an Arduino sketch with some extra libraries, and Coit has put all the source code online, and I've compiled this uh, with the Arduino IDE into a hex file because you have two ways to program this thing, either as you can see here with the standard six-pin ISP header, which I prefer, or with an FTDI uh, adapter directly from uh, your USB pro port from your PC. Uh, anyway, as I told you, I prefer to directly program the hex file with the ISP. Then you also need the fuse settings and I will also put this in a zip file for download so that you can directly program this because when you solder the uh, 80 mega 328 onto the board, it doesn't have a bootloader. So the normal way with Arduino sketches, where you work with the Arduino Uno, you already have the bootloader pre-programmed in your controller, but this is not, not the case here. So somehow the bootloader has to get into the controller and thereby it's just easier to use the ISP header. I think Coit didn't put any kind of uh, manual online. There are only two push buttons here, A and B, for setting the hours and the minutes. Um, I'm not quite sure um, if the two LEDs here in the middle, they are only blinking at some hours. I think he has put a kind of night mode into the software. I didn't take a look at the software uh, deeply. Um, anyway, now we have six in the morning and probably these are only flashing once every two seconds during daytime hours. Uh, next is, uh, it's apparently only a 12 hour mode as is usually used in the US, but here in Germany or most of Europe, we use the 24 hour format. So if I find the time, I will uh, change the Arduino sketch just for a 24 hour mode. And I, if I'm ready with that and it works, I will also put this for download. Next is um, Coit has made some provisions for some backlight LEDs, of course, also in SMD. I've left them out first because I couldn't find 
the right warm white color and basically I don't need the backlight but just to tell you uh, you can have this as a backlit version if you solder all the SMD LEDs behind the flip digits. And last thing is um, Coit also made a little casing out of um, acrylic and he also put the laser cut design files for download. I still didn't have the time uh, to do the laser cutting or let it be done by a company that does that commercially. Um, so you can all also build either a case of your own. Here you have these four holes just for fastening this thing to a case or uh, whatever. And perhaps the last thing is I think Coit himself was not very happy with this uh, barrel type jack here uh, because it doesn't have the standard size uh, so none of my uh, war warts was fitting so you have as an alternative you can just as I did um, solder some wires here directly and in the interchanging or mixing up plus and minus is no problem because there's a reverse protection diode inside. Ah, so that was it I think. Um, and he also put some little animation. You could see one when, when powering up. Uh, just a word, when I first powered this thing up I thought it wasn't working because uh, we still have a reset button. Uh, let's put this and you will see what happens. So now I've reset it. Now you have this one second, this blinking LED, blinking once a second. And the first 10 seconds, nothing happens. And then the little animation starts and the two uh, LEDs in the middle are lighting up. And, all, and only then the clock is ready. And so you just have to wait for 10 seconds uh, to check if your clock is working. And then you advance the, if you advance the hours, um, let's see if I can, no, that were the minutes, where are the hours, the other one. Then I think from 9 or 10 on you also get again, yeah, yeah then you get the animation. I couldn't find out the scheme behind this. 11 you get the animation, 12. And uh, then from one on again, perhaps this differentiates b between AM and PM. I don't know. Um, just I just have to look, take a look into the source code. And now you can see the. This is probably now 2 PM, so during daylight. So there the LEDs are blinking. Let's see if we advance further in time. Three o'clock they are also blinking. Four, five, six, blinking. Seven, eight, still the LEDs are blinking. Nine, ten. Ah, okay. From ten p.m., the LEDs are off. So this is apparently kind of dark time, and probably if you have the backlight LEDs, they will surely also be off. Let's see. Ah, and then in in the night hours or dark hours. Then we also don't have this animation and let's see the dark hours go until 6, 7, 8, 9, aha, 10 in the morning. From 10 in the morning until 10 p.m. These are the light hours or bright hours and from 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. are the dark hours. Okay, now I think I understood the scheme behind that. And finally, there's one component where you get a little problem, at least I did. 
this little lithium coin cell, it's, it's even a, a rechargeable lithium coin cell, uh, just to power the real-time clock here. This one didn't ship with DigiKey, uh, because DigiKey ships with air freight and as you will know, lithium is no longer allowed uh, with air freight. And so I had to buy this from uh, eBay, um, th that just came with a regular mail. So that was it for a demonstration of this nice little clock. And by the way, uh, these kind of display, they are still heavily used in Germany at uh, gasoline stations for indicating your uh, little liters or gallons, if you live in the US, uh, that you are just pumping into your car. So that was it for a short demo of this little flippy digit clock and thanks for watching. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. Until next time, bye from Roger, bye from Kanka Labs.